Hey guys, my name is Dean and welcome back to a new video. In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying a whole host of different Turkish snacks and hot food. As you can see here, we have a whole host of different foods. We have a simit, which is basically a Turkish bread. They call it a Turkish bagel as well. It's got many different names, but it's really nice. And then we have Turkish delight, but this is flavoured. This is an apple flavour. This isn't normal flavour. This is apple flavoured Turkish delight. And probably one of the most popular snacks in Turkey, which is also a huge meme, these pop keks. They used to actually be called top kek, which is where that phrase actually came from. But basically, it's a massive chocolate flavour filled cake, and inside is a banana flavour, and it's really nice. And we're going to try all these different snacks today. After we try all these snacks, I'm going to heat up some of the hot food. We have two different ones we're trying today, so stay tuned so you can see all of that later in the video. First up that we're going to try is the simit bread. This is kind of like a hard bread and a round bread that's kind of like a bagel, but it tastes really nice. Now, I've tried this one time before. It is quite dry, but it does actually have sesame seeds on top, and it's actually really nice. This is one of the most common snacks which you'll find if you do go to Turkey, it's always on the corners. I've watched videos where they always sell them on literally all the stands. It's probably the most popular bread treat or pastry, I guess, if you like. And you can see the bread right there. As you can see, it's actually really big. A lot of people do eat this as a snack, but you can definitely use this as a meal replacement because the amount of calories in this thing is probably around 500 calories. So you could literally eat one of these as a whole meal if you eat it with something else, maybe a sauce or some fish or something. But yeah, you can use it as a meal replacement or a really nice snack. Now I'm pretty sure it is a white bread. I'm guessing the dough they use and the flour is white flour. But if you look really closely, I'm not sure if the camera will focus upon that, but you can actually see it has sesame seeds all around the bread, which adds a different texture and flavor to it. Now's the moment of truth. It almost has a sweet flavour to it, I'm not sure if they actually add any sugar as part of the mixture, I will have to look up at the recipe, but it is obviously a savoury treat, but it tastes sweet, I think it's the sesame seeds on top, which are kind of that just a little bit sweet, that makes it a sweet bread, but it's actually really nice. If you want a mix of savoury and sweet, this is definitely the bread to eat, this is the simmer, the Turkish bagel, and you'll find this everywhere, even in some of the bakeries in the UK. Now in a lot of types of these videos, people will try all the snacks, and they'll try just a little bit and then they'll leave them. I've recently just woke up, so I'm just gonna actually eat this whole thing. I'm not sure if I can find something for it to go with, but I'm actually really looking forward to finishing that because this is actually one of my favorite breads. I've only just tried it recently, but it actually tastes really nice. The bread is actually really dry though. I really would recommend if you do try one of these, try and eat it with a sauce or try and eat it with a dip or something because it does actually take quite a long time to actually chew just because of how tough it is. Usually it's quite dry because it's actually left out on the counter for a long time. The next one we're going to be trying is actually the pop kek. Now in Turkish basically kek means cake, obviously it sounds like it, and pop is kind of like a lollipop. So it's basically like a cake ball snack and sometimes obviously they are on lollipops but as part of this treat they're just normal bagged. I'm pretty sure these are individually wrapped and bagged. I was going to buy one but then I found the multi-pack and I've tried these once before and that's why I decided to get them this time. Now they're made by I think the ETI company. I'm not sure if you can see that because on my camera everything seems mirrored so I'm not sure if you can actually read the text but basically it's banana flavor. Now you can see they're actually individually wrapped. There's lots of different packets in here. These are actually mini versions. So as you can see here this is what they look like. These are actually mini versions. The big versions are actually quite big. The normal versions I think are actually two times bigger than that. So these are actually small packets, which is fine because obviously for the taste testing, I guess it will be a little bit healthier. But it says on the portion size, if we look on this label, I'm not sure if you can see that, it says per two cakes. So 40 grams, the serving size is 176 calories. So that is eating two of these cakes. So it says we can have two of them. I'm not gonna have two right now, but I might eat another one later. And when you open up the wrapper, this is basically what you get. It's just like a little banana pastry cake. And it's just like, imagine any sponge cake snack, even in the UK or America. It's just sponge cake layer with chocolate on either side. The top is just absolutely drowned in chocolate. And then if we actually take a bite, you'll be able to see the banana filling inside. Like I said, I tried it one time last week. But this seems a little bit softer than last time because when I tried it last time, 
it was actually really dry because it had been on the shelf for a long time. So hopefully this is a little bit better. That's actually really soft. You can probably just see it on the inside there. Like I said, not sure if the camera's going to focus. But you can see in the middle there's kind of a yellowy little colouring. That's actually the banana filling and it actually tastes really nice. In a lot of foreign countries you'll see a lot of different snacks like this where they blend really nice flavours together. You don't really get anything that has banana and chocolate blended in the UK. I can't really think of a snack like that that we do actually get. But that actually goes perfect into a really nice snack. I'm not sure if they use real banana though, I will have to look on the ingredients or if they're using some kind of flavouring because it does seem like an unnatural taste but the actual filling looks like real banana itself is melted so I'm not quite sure on that but I'd actually be really interested to find out definitely going to give that a thumbs up I think that's even better than the bread obviously since it's a sugary snack you would obviously expect that now the next one is actually the last of the sweet treats we've got so obviously the bread wasn't really a sweet treat although it had a little bit of a sweet hint to it but this is the Turkish Delight now this is an open packet, a few people have already eaten some of this, but I've managed to save some. This is the apple flavoured Turkish Delight. Now it's actually pretty cheap to be honest. If you know me, you'll realise that I don't really like Turkish Delight. The normal flavour, I'm not really sure what the normal flavour is, but I thought I'd give this a try, where basically they've kind of flavoured it with apple flavouring, and I think hopefully it'll be a lot nicer than the normal one. Now I know a lot of people like the normal Turkish Delight, and it's a really savoured treat around the world they export it to different countries very popular a lot of people who know turkish food or don't know it will know of turkish delight obviously because the name but i'm not really a big fan of it but hopefully this one will be a lot better there's a very very small flavoring of apple to it you don't actually realize it's apple at all when you bite into it but you can definitely taste all the ice and sugar on the outside it's always powdered in layers and layers of ice and sugar. But you can just taste the apple. It's more of an aftertaste after you bite into it. You have to wait three or four seconds until you actually realize it's apple. It's actually really nice. Like I said, I don't use it like normal Turkish Delight. So this flavoring actually makes this Turkish Delight taste a whole lot better than normal. It's not perfect, it's not great, but it's a lot better than normal. So I do have to give that a thumbs up. Although it could definitely be better because it still tastes quite artificial. And that is the sweet treats guys. And so now a little bit later I'm going to move on to cooking a little bit of the hot food. We have a kibber and we have a kofta which is a lamb kofta coming up. And I'm going to be showing you those next up on the video. If you're enjoying the video make sure to like and subscribe because I'll be putting up more awesome vlogs. And different kind of challenges and tasting videos just like this one. This is the lamb kofta guys. This is like a meatball in a lot of Mediterranean countries. They've got it in Turkey, it's a very popular dish in the Middle East and right now it's kind of like a meatball and it's a mixture of lamb. We've got lots of different herbs and spices already in there. We've already got it freshly prepared from the shop and now what we're going to do is we're going to take a few chunks of this and we're going to roll it and put it onto the oil already prepared on the grill and we're going to completely grill it and it's going to be super nice and then we're going to put it in some Mexican wraps and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Once we cook the meat, we're going to grill some wraps as well and we're going to place it in those. It's kind of like these really tiny folded thick flatbreads. We're going to spoon a little bit of this lamb. It's already been cooked and completely mixed together by the people who were the butchers, I guess. And we're going to place them on here. Now, usually it's like a meatball, so we're going to put kind of small and big bits on. We're not going to make it too large. I'm just going to layer it on there. Now, we're going to cook all of this because we've had this for a few days as well. We want to make sure it doesn't go off. It'll cook quicker if we put it into some small parts. I'm going to layer loads of it together and maybe put some peppers and vegetables once we make the wrap. As you can see right now, we're shaping all of this lovely kofta meat into small patties and then we're going to grill them. You need to make sure it has shape to it. You need to make them big, thick and hearty to make sure they come out really nice out of the grill. Now we're going to light up the grill and put these bad boys right under. And look at that. And now we're going to wait seven minutes on each side and we're going to flip them over just exactly like you cook a meat burger. We're going to put over these folded flatbreads under the grill as well when the meat comes to simmer and when it's cooked a little bit more. And this is kind of like South American inspired breads. It's just like what you find anywhere else in the world. It's a nice thick bread that we can lay the meat into. And then we're going to try and get like a salad or some kind of filling for it. Now I've been trying to think about what filling we could actually put in here. So I'm thinking with these ready chopped stir fry vegetables, I'm going to chop them up. They're just like any other vegetables. And I'm going to fry them so they're a little bit softer 
they're going to look they're warmer and more edible and then we're going to stuff them inside the wrap and it's going to be a really nice meaty vegetable wrap now we're going to pour a little bit of this seed oil straight into the wok just so we've got something to actually cook the vegetables on but we don't want to have too much of it in we just need a little tiny bit just to make sure the vegetables cook and don't stick to the pan Look at these lovely stir-fry vegetables. Now we're going to turn it off because they're getting a little bit caramelised at this point. So we want to make sure they don't get too black. You can see those nice hot vegetables and put straight in that wrap in about 15 minutes. They're coming along really nicely. Look at that juicy sizzle. They're looking like they're nearly finished on this side. I'd give it maybe two or three more minutes and we should be good to flip. We're going to season it with just a little bit of the yogurt and mint sauce when it's done. This is great on kebab, cooked meats and salads and that should make it seasoned taste a little bit nicer. We've just flipped them. Look at all those juices pouring out the sides. I'm not sure which spices these are, but there's a lot of red juices coming out and hopefully that'll still be enough meat when we actually get to it. Look at all this hot meat. Everything's cooked. You can just still see that hot sizzle in the corner and all the meat is just cooked but not too cooked. And now we're gonna put it in the wrap. And now with all the juicy vegetables and meat, we have ourselves a lovely kebab. Mmm. That actually goes really nice with stir fry vegetable. It's just that little bit of a flavour from that yogurt and mint sauce. All in all, homemade kofta, I'd give that a 7 out of 10. So for the last part of this video, we're moving on to the very last piece of food, which is the chicken kibble. Usually this is just a ball of meat which is spiced and it has loads of different herbs and spices in But for some reason this is kind of like a pancake style today And you can see these in Turkey and a lot of the Middle East countries Now we are going to cook this and I'm going to take this apart It's going to be interesting to try because like I said it's usually just a meatball But I'm pretty sure this is just kind of like a pancake sort of thing which has got the meat inside But it does have the usual ingredients like all spices and bulgur wheat so it should be pretty interesting to see how it tastes now the way that we cook this is we do actually fry it so we're going to put a bit of olive oil in and we're going to cook it in the pan we're just going to slide it on and then what we're going to do is we're going to keep flipping it and hopefully at some point it should be well cooked on both sides and in it goes. You can already tell this, even though it's flat like the pancake and a lot different to normal, you can tell this is made of bulgur wheat because it's literally cracking. You can see at the sides the whole thing's cracking and falling apart, which means when I do flip it with a spatula, it's just going to come into pieces. But hopefully, we can cook it really nicely on both sides and it should still taste nice. It's already smelling a little bit burnt and it's only been on the side for literally two or three minutes. So I am going to flip it and you'll see that all the meat's inside. It's actually completely coming apart. It's just like a pancake, it's actually really nicely cooked on one side. But it's just completely falling apart, but it's all made out of the wheat. And you'll see that it's going to be nearly impossible to flip this thing properly. Ooh, and look how nice that's looking. The lesson I've learned actually is I'm going to turn this down, because if you look at it, just just the sound of the crispy and the cooking and stuff, this thing is going to completely burn, because Remember there's a mixture of meat and stuff inside it that also needs to cook and if the sides are just cooking lots but the inside isn't it's best to just slow cook it on a lower heat level. The whole thing is literally just a stringy pancake. If we just put the spatula under there you can see all the meat underneath. It's just basically a meat pancake how they make this. Now's the moment of truth. I'm going to pour gravy over the main bit because I think that'll go down a treat. But I'm going to try the first half on its own without gravy. And this is the final product. This thing looks absolutely perfect. As you can see, the actual pancake, or I don't know if you could call it a pancake because the kibbeh is made with bulgur wheat. The actual pancake is actually really crispy. There's a little bit of gravy under, 
but I've actually saved this half plain on top. Maybe you'll taste a little bit of gravy underneath, but I wanted to keep it as authentic as possible. Under the layer, this has gone really crispy because we cooked it for about 15 minutes. Under the layer, you have tons of seasoned chicken meat. Oh boy, right. It's not bad, it's very crispy. You can taste a lot of the spices inside, but I'm not really sure what the spices are. You can definitely taste them. The meat's not very tasteful, but you can still taste this chicken. It tastes more like turkey to me, but it is chicken. And the gravy kind of makes it less dry because it's obviously really crispy and really dry because it's not a normal mix. I'd give it about a six or a seven, but it's still really good. But it really doesn't stay on the same level as the lamb kofta kebab that we made. But it's still not too bad. It's not too bad to start the second day off with a good breakfast. Like I said, usually you don't find them in this flat pancake-like texture or shape. Usually they're in bowls, so it's kind of weird to find it like that, but it actually tastes pretty nice. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and smash the like button. Next time, I think I'm going to do a vlog. So if you want to see that, smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe with notifications turned on, because I'm going to be bringing some really awesome videos and vlogs soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.